Hello, everybody. Um, I just wanted to start by saying thank you for joining us today. Um, it's really an honor to get to chat with Edna and Chiquith today. Um, so today's chat will kind of be about the exhibition uh, Mother Tongues and Miskichi Waskegon. This was a show that um, involved the seven indigenous languages of Treaty 6. Um, the works existed in the downtown Edmonton in Amiskechewaskegan, and um, each one honors uh, a different language. And yeah, so today we have um, Edna Elias, and I'll just kind of tell you a little bit about her. Uh, so Edna Elias was called by her grandmother, um, Edna, I'm so sorry, I probably, I did my best, <laughs> um, meaning a person from thin ice, having been born on a fishing lake in the fall. A teacher by profession, Edna is an Inuit language and cultural advocate. After five years as a commissioner of Nunavut, Edna had returned to her home community, the, the most westerly community in Nunavut. Since her return home, she had opened her home to women to learn traditional sewing and fur preparation skills. Edna owned a business promoting the preservation and re retention of Inuluktun through language courses, providing educational and cultural orientation and advice, programming and event planning, the production <clears throat> of Inunuktun reading material and support for the language programming in the schools. And I continue to share her Inuit culture and language and knowledge in the community projects, melding contemporary mater materials and skills, her, cre her creations, including clothing, jewelry, bags, and ornaments. Miss Edna is a member of the Inuit community of Edmonton and is involved as an Inuit elder with the National Ga Gathering of Elders, Kanata, and the National Indigenous Cultural Expo. She was recently involved in the ward naming initiative of the city of Edmonton and is a member of the Edmonton Indigenous Framework Women's Circle. Ms. Edna is a recipient of the Order of Canada, November 2019. So thank you, Edna, for being here today. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited it's for the honor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fun. Um, okay, so the next artist we have with us is Chiquis today. Um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about Chiquis. Chiquis is a Nihio soul singer and songwriter from Big Stone Cree Nation. Her musical background is rooted in woodland Cree traditions with creative influences ranging from chanting, overtone singing, jazz, soul, gospel, rhythm and blues, and reggae. Chiquis is a fluent Nihio speaker and singer-songwriter. She sings in her mother tongue and in English. Her first album, Esku, which means woman, in the Cree language, was nominated for the 2019 Indigenous Music Awards for the Best Folk Album of the Year. Her songs are a testament of women's beauty, resilience, and res resurgence. Hello, Chiquis. Well, hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm raising background. Oh, okay. you know what? I think actually Carol is here with us as well. Oh, so yay, oh, we're gonna have good. everybody yes. nice. She so, made it. She made it, yes. Yeah. So yeah. um I'm gonna go ahead then and tell everyone a little bit. Oh, oh, uh, I think we may have lost her, but Carol was an important component to um the collaboration between Chickweese and and Carol, so I, um, I wanted to just tell you a little bit about her as well. So Chubby Cree is a Nihio, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Chubby Cree is a First Nations indigenous hand drum group that was taken the internet by storm, steeped in traditional Cree music and culture. Carol Powder has taught all of her children and grandchildren and was herself trained at a young age by her then 99 year old grandfather in the future we're going to be in the future you're going to be a singer she re recalled him saying you're going to help bring those women back to the drum because that's where they belong 
For the past five years, the group has been playing nonstop around their hometown of Edmonton at both traditional powwow events and at as a go-to artist of events in support of women's rights, the environment and marginalized of society. Channeling the authentic spirit of Cree music and healing power to unite people. The group's powerful performances have often brought audience members to tears. So we have to do with us. Hi, Carol. <laughs> 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 That's it. <laughs> oh, glad you made it, Carol. Yeah, I'm. I'm crazy. I. I kind of. I. I think I. I. I accessed by. Uh, I'm just lucky I did it right. <laughs> no kidding, because yeah, I couldn't even do it by myself. I had to come over to Shy's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is her background. <laughs> <laughs> Technology yeah. is a weird thing, I think. Um, yeah. So, Carol, you've never met Edna, so I just virtually introduce you. This is Edna. Um, she was Hi, also Carol. in the show. Hi, Edna. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, so also, I'm here in Edmonton. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, Edna was our Inuit um, representation for the show, so... It was a, it, yeah, it's really just an honor to um, have gotten to work with you all. And I'm very, very thankful. Um, yeah, so I'm very happy to be here with you all today. Uh, so to start, I was thinking um, it would be nice to maybe open it up with uh, playing um, Chikwe Sing Carol song for everyone so they can hear it. Yeah. Um, so if we could, if we could play that now, that'd be awesome. Okay, which one? Down and down in an geese in Manito, the Nascom, the Nan, and no, a geese a gag and a whim, Nan. Mamma, the Dow in an geese in Manito, the Nascom, the Nan, Nin Nan, get to ask him suck, we tea and Nan. Mamma, Kiss him on a toe, nan, nan, ask him, and look, I kiss a cat. My mouth, the towel, and kiss him on a toe, nan, nan, ask him, and the women, and man, Kasagi ki tu ya Wow, that's amazing. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the soft beat of the drum has so much effect. Yeah, yeah, that's Carol. Yeah. So Carol did the drumming and the chanting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really beautiful song. That was your first time hearing it, hey, Edna? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was so nice to kind of share the artworks at the beginning to familiarize everybody with them. And so that was a song by Chickweez and Carol Powder. Um, the chanting and drumming was by Carol Powder and uh, like the songwriting and everything else was uh, by Chickweez. So um, we'll get into a little bit more, but I also yeah. wanted to share uh, with everyone Edna's work as well. So if we could just share those those images um, yeah, so this was a work by um, Edna, which was called Expressions of Elation. Um, and it's a public artwork in Alex de Cotu Park. And yeah, so it's, um, we can talk a little bit more about it, but I just wanted to show you the, the beautiful work. Arriga. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess kind of to start, I thought it would be nice if um, if, if each one of you wants to try to talk about the process of creating the work. Um, yeah, like how did the work develop? Since my work was just on there, I'll start. Sure. Um, at first, I, you know, like, okay, in the Inuit language, there's so many dialects and I thought Jesus I don't want to just pick my dialect and eventually I decided um, I'll, I'll use two dialects of Inuit people from the Western Arctic the Inuvialuit and the Inuit from the Eastern Arctic that speak Inuktun and use the syllabics so I decided that I would use the two dialects of Inuit languages and use this expression that, that they use um, that has the same definitions, meanings. Ariga, Ariga is uh, used by the Inuvialuit in the West Canadian Western Arctic. And Alia Nai, on the bottom of the uh, tapestry, is uh, used by the Inuit in uh, Eastern Nunavut on Northern Quebec. So Ariga, Alia Nai, they both are expressions of Pure joy, happiness, exhilaration, um, excitement, so on. And uh, so I thought, well, those two would be perfect um, to express, you know, joy and happiness. Um, especially during the COVID year, we needed to see something that would, you know, we can still say, yes, Ariga and Ali and I, there are still things in our lives that are, that still can make, that still make us happy. And uh, so, but the actual design kept changing. My mind was racing with all kinds of designs and <laughs> materials to use. And, you know, all I had was that one, this, oops, this small piece, this small piece of seal skin. That's all I had that wasn't all cut up. And so I was limited to that size, but amazing photography. They made it into a billboard. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but you see as the, the uh, northern lights up at the top in the blue, the green, and the pink, and the white, those are all just uh, cutoffs, trimming edges from the edge of the seal skin. So I didn't have to do anything. I just stitched them on. To make them look like northern lights. Nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Inuit people uh, living in the darkness for about eight months of the year rely heavily on constellations for navigation. The sun, the moon, and stars. So I thought it would be, um, I wanted to capture those. And so I put in the Big Dipper on one mm -hmm. side. Mm. And... Uh, Above the Big Dipper, over to the right a little bit, I put the North Star. Mm. Mm. And then over on this side, you may see it somewhere. You see three little beads, 
flickering. Those are mm -hmm. Orion's belt. Uh -huh. so those are the three main um, constellations or stars that Inuit people use for navigation. Mm -hmm. So Beautiful. I want to capture that on this dark seal skin with the Aurora Borealis. So that was my final, you know, design concept. And I thought if I keep changing my mind, I'll never get it done on time. But I was so pleased with the result. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. And the, the seal, I chose seal skin as my main medium because um, to Inuit people, the seal is uh, one of the very important animals in our in our homeland. The seal is, uh, provides the skin for fur and clothing and tents and lots of nourishing meat and blood for our, in our diet and the important oil um, that provides omega foods in our diet as well. And it also provides oil for the uh, woman's um, soapstone oil lamp. So um, the seal is a very important natural resource in, in the Arctic. Yeah. It's such a beautiful work, Edna. I love it so much. All the elements and the story. There's so many stories in bed within, you know, yeah. like, yeah. behind each material. Um, yeah. So, Ariga. Ariga. Hi, Yeah. Yeah, did you see smoke? Yes, yeah. I saw that today. I was so thankful to see the blue sky. Yeah. 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 Um, Chiquis, did you want to talk a little bit about how the song came to be? How did it develop? The process of making it? Yeah. Um, I have a question for Edna first, though. Oh, yes. Let's do it. <laughs> um, okay. how, do you, how do you say Northern Lights in your language and what's like the interpretation of that word? <clears throat> Northern Lights. Um, Akhaliyat. Mm -hmm. Akhaliyat. There's really no interpretation of it. Like there's no meaning? Um, the meaning like when you, when you, hmm. we, There's no translation for it. Oh, just, okay. Uh, that's a, that was our name for Aurora Borealis. Oh, okay. Northern Lights. Okay. Uh, Akhaliyat. Oh, Akhaliyat. okay. Yeah, yeah the, the reason why I'm asking is um, I, I was wondering if there's like a similarity in how we described the Northern Lights because the Cree word um, for Northern Lights is um, which is mm -hmm. the spirits or the ancestors are dancing. Yeah. So that's actually how we describe the Northern Lights. Sometimes so. I've, I've heard that too, dancing of the spirits. And mm -hmm. Northern Lights, uh, our parents and grandparents used to um, use the Northern Lights to, to scare us home. <laughs> the, when the northern lights came out at night during the winter, they because they want us to go home and not be running around in the dark and stuff. You know, the northern lights come out. They say they'll they'll swoop down and they'll chop your head off and they'll oh. use it to fall. So we just to run home. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. yeah, that's our parents used to do that too. But one thing they'd say is like, don't whistle at them. Because yeah. if you whistle at them, they'll come down. Yeah. And um, actually, just recently, one of my friends, which is kind of interesting, um, she said she was coming from like one town to Wabaska, which is usually about 80 kilometers in the bush, right? You, it's just all bush and road. And she said the northern lights were out that night and um, they came down and they actually followed her vehicle. And she Ooh. said it was a really freaky experience. And she said, we just stepped on it. <laughs> and she said, they followed us for a long time. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> oh, so I don't know. But yeah. Okay. So I guess I should, I'll talk but a little bit. <laughs> but I do know they really love music. I've watched them dancing. No. Brilliant colors. In a yeah. Community name Ulukakto. Someone mm. was playing the harmonica outside, mm. and they were a show, really beyond. Uh. 
they love music. Ah, that's so cool. Yeah, so it must, you know, there's probably <laughs> true that those are our ancestors dancing, yeah. right? Mm. Yeah. It'd be really cool to uh, sing for them and play for them. Yeah. Carol, that should be our next song. <laughs> Where's Carol? <laughs> yes. Yes. I know. <laughs> Gaswin, uh -huh. are you hiding? <laughs> Come out every once in a while. <laughs> uh, all right, so there, now we almost see your full face, Carol. <laughs> you see what you hear. I'm trying to look like my granddaughter. Yeah. <laughs> now we can see you. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I've known Carol for mm, maybe about four or five years now, Carol. Yeah. Yeah. Met her at, I was, um, we were both performing at an event and I was just like, um, I was drawn to Carol and her singing and her children singing and them sitting around the drum. And so from there, I, I approached her and um, she invited me out to, she gave me the invitation to come sing with them whenever. And so since then, Carol, Carol and I have been really good friends and I love it when she invites me. I can't always make it and what the opportunities that I do have to sing and drum with Carol are like probably my most precious like music moments um and just even i don't really know a whole lot of like indigenous i mean i know a lot of indigenous musicians but um carol is uh my favorite <laughs> indigenous female musician and she just she'll talk a little bit about herself but um her grandfather passed down a lot of songs to her and she's like this her song library inside of carol is very expansive and um i i look forward to continuing to sing with you carol and learning more songs <laughs> 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 and the drumming and her beat so she's not just got a library of songs but she's a really good musician and when you bring her into the studio to drum, she just nails it. Like she's just spot on. And then the chanting as well, which I'll allow her to talk more about that. But so the song, so the song that I wrote um, is titled Gisi Manitu and Gisi Manitu means kind creator. And I, for a few years now, I've always wanted to have or conduct an indigenous um, choir, um, but more um, with like our homeless brothers and sisters. I always, and I still want to do that. I've just never had the opportunity, but then that led to, well, I can write a song for them. And I always like, I always wanted to write a song for the homeless and, and it was a song to inspire like hope <coughs> and let them know that they're loved and that they're special. And I wanted this song to be not me singing to them, but how creator sees them. And so then when I was asked to be a part of this show, the Indigenous Languages show, Mother Tongues, I think it's called, Shai? <laughs> I think it's called Mother Tongues. But yeah, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and um, so then it was a full moon and I thought, okay, this is my chance to write this song and hopefully have it played outside where um, where our people can hear it, where our homeless brothers and sisters can hear it. And um, uh, so when I started writing it again, it was with those intentions that creator would sing through me. And I asked creator, like, what is it that you want to say? And then I was reminded of all the elders that I heard growing up praying um, and the words that they would use. And I thought, okay, I'm going to use those 
very special words that they use to pray over people and to our community. So I just threw some words together, threw that song together, and it was actually a full moon that night, and I wasn't feeling good. I was actually, I had a lot of anxiety, and I was, uh, I was kind of feeling low, like emotionally, and I didn't feel like writing the song in that state but I just did and I was surprised at what happened like within about 10 minutes I just sat there with those words and I started singing them out and within about 10-15 minutes the song was done and I knew then that that I was just a vessel you know it doesn't matter if I feel good or I don't feel good that creator is still gonna come through come through me because I'm open to that. And um, that was a real lesson for me because I I did, I wasn't feeling good. I didn't feel good about myself that day. And yet this beautiful song still came out. And um, so then I asked Carol to, um, to do the chanting for me. And I'm always curious, like when I work with Carol, I don't tell her, I'll just send her the music and I'll say like, can you chant on this or can you drum? And it's almost like Christmas because you don't know what she's going to do. And I know it's going to be good. And so um, sure enough, when she came into the studio, she had her chanting ready and the drumming and um, it just came together. And I'm going to allow at this point, Carol, to talk about um, her chanting and what that is for her, why she chanted the way that she did in the song. Um, so yeah, so I'll I'll pass it over to you, Carol, to talk about the chanting in the song and your drumming. Carol, are Wait, you there? Are I you frozen? She, I think she may have froze. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why she's just staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh let's see. Any um oh she's gone. Maybe she might, she'll come she back. Just have to rejoin, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there was a lot of elements to creating that that song and I had the honor to get to come to the studio and be in the studio with Carol and Chiquise and yeah, it was just a beautiful process to see them both doing their thing and um, yeah, creating this song that I, for me brings, yeah, it brings a lot of hope and uh, a lot of comfort. Um, I know you spoke about a bit about how you know, this song kind of, you wanted to give it the feeling of, of a baby and a, is it called a wap, wapus or? A wapus is a rabbit. Wapsuin, which is a swing. Yeah. And, um, and maybe Edna, you guys have this too, but um, growing up, um, they used to, um, when we lived in houses, <laughs> they would tie like, um, like two ropes from corner to corner and then they throw a blanket in there and kind of, you know, and then throw the baby in there. And it's usually over <laughs> the parents' bed so that you could just reach up and just like swing your baby. But that, um that like when I was when I was writing the song when I was like in in that moment um um I that's what I felt I felt like um that I wanted that when people hear the song and um I wanted them to feel like they were in a swing that they were being comforted and I imagine those swings like the way we make them like they're really tight so the baby's like this in there yeah, so yeah. I imagine it's supposed to um I don't know this for sure but I'm I'm guessing that it's supposed to like um like uh what's the word um you know when you emulate um uh I think that's the word um like uh like the womb like mm -hmm. what do you know about the swing Edna Well I used to see swings used in a tent Okay. And they would peg it at the back corner over the bedside of the bed platform. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, the mother, she might be busy at her cooking mm-hmm. or something or her sewing, and then she can just reach over and give it a push and make it sing <laughs> some more, you know? Yeah. And, uh, that, that song is just like a lullaby. We just lull a baby to sleep. I yeah. Love to if, I, if I was trying to go to sleep, I think it would help me. And, uh, yeah. Also, Indian woman. Um, mm-hmm. It kind of reminded me your song of throat singing. <laughs> some throat, throat singing songs that are really soft uh, and mellow. Yeah. Because uh, women pack their babies a lot mm-hmm. on their backs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. To keep, to keep the baby next to mom like they were in the womb. And okay. it's warm. And the baby can he still hear the mother's heartbeat. Uh, so babies were packed a lot. And the mothers mm-hmm. would hum and you know rock and whatever mm-hmm. when you're going about their daily chores. But yeah, maybe on your back. So um, throat singing mm-hmm. was uh, also a means of that, like kind of rocking okay. and loving. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I thought of when I heard your song. Uh, oh wow! Do you um do you throat sing, Edna? <laughs> if I'm clearing my throat, maybe for my. <laughs> The throat singing is done by Inuit women more in the Eastern Arctic okay. and not in the Western or Central Arctic so much. Okay. But a lot of the younger uh, generation, they, uh, girls and young women mm. are learning it. So it's going transboundary and, you know, pan-Arctic. Nice. So yeah, nice. taught and learned. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, I think we may have lost uh, um, Carol. Maybe that. Maybe she'll join us eventually. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. for now, uh, Chiquis, did you want to explain a little bit more about the chanting, um, or did you want to just we, we could wait for Carol too? Uh, maybe um, I won't. I won't go into the chanting. I hope that she can do that. Um, she could probably better articulate it. I chant too. I mean, I write a lot of my music by chanting first, by uh, just uh, humming, right? And then and then chanting, getting into the spirit. And then from there, I hear the melody. And then when I chant, I feel the feeling. So I know what's coming through me and then I'll put words on it. So a lot of times I write my music through chanting first. That's where I get the melody and the feeling. Um, but that's all I'll say about chanting. <laughs> I'll let Carol do it. Um, <laughs> but what I could talk about, I think that's also important in the song, is um, the one word that I use. I've actually re-recorded this song. So initially, one of the words that I heard the elders say all the time, referring to Mantu, the creator, was um, Nohtawi now. And um, and so it was initially written that way, but then I I I really wanted to know what that word meant, and so then I I took it to one of um our elders back home that runs our sweats. Um, she's she's a female, and I asked her about that word and. She said the proper way to say it is actually, oh, dawi now, not no, like take the N away. And she said, oh, dawi now. Um, she said, if anybody asks you, tell them that that's where we all come from. Well, I didn't really quite understand what she was talking about. <laughs> and I needed her to break it down for me a little bit more. And she said, when, when in ceremony, when spirit songs are being sung um, through the people that are in the ceremony. So when we sing songs, how she explained it is that those songs are actually coming from our grandfathers and our grandmothers. And they're coming, they're channeling through us, through our bodies. And those she referred to as spirit songs. And she said, when the grandmothers and the grandfathers sing they always refer to Mantu and the creator, or Mantu or the creator, same thing, um, as Oh Dawi now. 
And that's how our ancestors in the spirit world refer to um, creator. And so I thought, oh, wow, that's very special. You know, that was a really big teaching for me. I never knew that. And it's a very powerful word. And, and it's also not a word coming from us, but it's actually coming from our ancestors. And so Oh Dawi now, she then further explained, she said, Oh Dawi now is where we all come from. And, and she talks about the story of how when we were first conceived, we travel to this fire, our souls, like, or we travel to this fire, and which is Mantu. It's like this great fire or, or where we come from. And we take a piece of that fire and that becomes our soul. And, and that's why in, in Cree, I, I can't speak for all indigenous cultures, but um, in Cree, we say we're all related. We say all our relations, you know, like we're all related to one another, not just indigenous people, but non-indigenous people, like all humans on this earth, we're all related and we all come from the same fire. We came, we come from that same source. So that's a really um, good teaching and, but it's not just human beings. Um, it's all living things on earth. You know, those are all our relations. So that's a really, uh, Oh, what was that? Shai, is that you? Oh, yeah, sorry. Am I back? I think you're back, yep. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, that, that's all. You can, you can uh, take the baton, Shai. <laughs> take the baton. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, like, in thinking about, you know, your mother tongues and your languages, like, I'm just curious, like, how it felt to you know, create a work in your own language? Like, how did that feel to create um, an artwork that, that highlighted your language? Uh, <clears throat> I thought mine was, you know, it was kind of unique because the two groups of Inuit, the Inuvialuit and the Eastern Arctic Inuit, they have, they write in two different writing systems. The Inuvialuit, like us in, in our Inuit Noctid language, we write with using the Roman alphabet. That's what the uh, um, missionaries taught us mm -hmm. uh, when they started preaching and teaching reading and writing of the Bible or whatever, um, was in the Roman alphabet. So that's Ariga is in our mm -hmm. writing system. Whereas Ali and I is in the syllabics, which is very similar mm -hmm. symbols to the syllabics of the Cree people. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the Cree people that were using syllabics before the Inuit. Another missionary adapted the Cree syllabics to suit the Inuktitut language. Mm. So you'll see the same symbols as mm -hmm. in syllabics in the Inuit syllabics, but they have different sounds. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's kind of so cool. unique in this piece. Yeah. 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 I, I have heard. two writing systems of the Inuit people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I studied a little bit about the syllabics. Um, this year, I was trying to find research on where those come from because, according to um, I guess written history, you know, we're not always mm -hmm. been included in that in that history. They're writing history for us. Yeah. Um, but you know, they said that it was. Um, uh, oh, geez, I can't remember his name. Um, James. Oh, I can't remember his name. But again, um, he was like a he was a missionary. And in Saskatchewan, I do believe, or was it Manitoba? But they say he came up with the syllabic writing system. And, but that's because, you know, they had the pen and paper. That's what they wrote. You know, they, they claimed that. 
But as I started to research, there was just a lot of questions that came up. Like, well, first of all, one of the questions was, how could apparently he was able to write this that came up with the syllabic writing system and published it within like three weeks, like such a short time span. So you kind of question that also to um, this wasn't my question, but I, I read it in a, another paper where um, that person, that researcher asked the question, like, how could a non-Indigenous or a, a white missionary <laughs> from England, from Europe, even come up with these symbols to put sounds to them? he would have had to work with like the indigenous people to be able yeah, to even yeah. get those sounds first of all, and then put a symbol to it. But um, there's this man that apparently our oral history says uh, that um, it was a, a Cree man. He died for three days while he was um, gone into the spirit world he went into, I think they say like four different levels. And it was in one of those levels that um, these syllabics were given to him in the spirit world. And he was told that when he comes back to earth, he's to teach his people these symbols. That's what Whoa. our oral, oral history says. And those symbols are also found like way before this Cree missionary claim mm -hmm. to have written those syllabics. But um, we have those symbols in like ceremony. They're like written on rocks. So these yeah. are very ancient symbols yeah. and I would love to like learn more about it and just really get to the source mm -hmm. of where these symbols are. Cause apparently um, there's, <coughs> there's um, in Saddle Lake, there's um, uh, they, the, the method that they teach with the syllabics is that each syllabic has a spiritual meaning and like a principle and a value built right into that symbol on how like it, there's a lot of natural laws and teachings yeah. in those symbols it's not just sounds so I'm trying to learn as much as I can sorry mm -hmm. Shai I don't know no, if we I answered your question <laughs> no, I love that I guess like I'm curious too because I, I you know more than me but like each syllabic is it's like an alphabet right like each mm -hmm. one is like a sound mm -hmm. um, to create the word. Is it the same for you, Edna? Like in uh, one... in Inuptitut, um, mm -hmm. the only symbols um, e that are one represented by one. If you put it in the Roman alphabet, it's mm -hmm. only one letter. Like that's yeah. e, u, and a. Okay. Okay. I, U and A. Yeah. Everything else is uh, a consonant and a vowel. Yeah. One symbol. Yeah. Ha, ta, ka, ma, na, sa, la, e, p, t, k, f, n, i, n, c, l, i, z. So similar. You. And that's oh. the way we teach that syllabic alphabet when I was teaching in schools. Um, oh. So it's... um. It's like shorthand, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you a quick little story. <laughs> I graduated from Teachers College. Uh -huh. um, they were the government was trying to place us. My husband had graduated from environmental technology. Mm -hmm. They we, we couldn't find job placements where the two of us would live with with our kids as a family. Uh, they finally <laughs> found a place way up in the high eastern Arctic called Arctic Bay. Mm -hmm. And so after researching a bit, we decided, okay, we might as well go there. That's the only place where we can find those two jobs, teacher and a wildlife officer. <laughs> so, and then I thought, oh, my God. They, those kids come to school and are taught in Inuktitut, which mm -hmm. is a totally different dialect from mine. Okay. A totally different writing system from mine. Yeah. They write, read, and learn to read and write syllabics. I use uh, the Roman alphabet. Uh, okay. So I thought, oh my God, I'm going to teach grades one and two. You <laughs> know, Inuit children, how am I going to learn this? 
Thank goodness I never stopped thanking Eli, who was my class, Elijah, who was my classmate. Mm. In the evenings and after school classes, he, in three weeks, he taught me to read and write and master syllabics before <laughs> I left the program to <laughs> go to my first teaching oh. course. <laughs> yeah, so you could learn it in three weeks. Oh my <laughs> God. So, so all the sounds? Okay. Learn the sounds and the the writing, which way they go. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, um Shai, you were gonna say something? Oh, I was just curious what age you were at now when you learned. I was mid twenties. Oh wow. Yeah. Mm. Mid to see. Yeah, mid twenties, I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool because like I really in my lifetime would love to learn my language and that gives me hope yeah. that I can that I can, you know. Yeah. I tried learning at one point trying to type it, learn how to type it, but I just <laughs> couldn't learn the typing yeah. <laughs> on a syllabic keyboard. Syllabic oh, keyboard. That's so cool. yeah. Yeah. Mm. Boy, all the sounds that you made, like the, because, okay, your vowels. Um, okay, so our vowels for A is like yeah. ah and ah. Yeah. How about you for A? What are yours? <coughs> so we have the sound is ah, e, u. But for, for the letter A, though, is a it? A is ah. Yeah. Yeah. Letter I, e. Okay. Letter U, U. Oh, okay, so just one sound per one sound. vowel? Yeah. Okay, ours. We, mm -hmm. we can put a combination of vowels and then they oh. can go I, 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 or ow, mao, or you are, you know. You are. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because for our, we have like the four vowels, right? Um, I, um, O, A, and e e yeah because our our o is like oh and oh that's our o and then the e the i is e and e so that's where the e sound is uh -huh. and then our a is ah and ah yeah yeah so if we wanted to say ah we would mm -hmm. put the symbol like this can you see it yeah uh, where am I? I'm really uncoordinated. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it would be ah, uh, okay, like a triangle facing one way, and okay, then okay. Put a dot over it. That means it's a double sound. Oh, so, uh, so the la. Okay, and okay. okay. And same with the e sound, double okay. i. You put a dot over it. Ah. Uh. So, Hmm, yeah. that's cool. And you guys sometimes put two vowels together? Uh, yeah. 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 So what, what are some of those sounds? Ah, <coughs> uh, ooh, and uh, e, ooh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ooh, e, i, ooh, uh, mao, or ow. And so we can combine the u and a. Yeah. A, and a, okay. A and I. You know, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, that's cool. Yeah. Huh? It was, it was, if you have the, if you know the language already, I found mm -hmm. it was cool to learn the, the reading and the writing of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I did have a, a bit of a reversal problem with some of them. <laughs> when you have the like a J and then the, it goes the other way in some cases. <laughs> so, yeah, it's important uh, to make sure I got the right symbol or it totally changes the meaning of a word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Hmm. In thinking Easy. about like meanings of words, I guess I was curious to hear more about um, the meaning of the words you chose in each one of your pieces. Uh, like, um and I guess why yeah, why did you choose those words? And um yeah, I'm just curious to hear about 
bit more about that. Okay. Um, Ariga, I don't, I don't know the meaning of it. It's just that it's an expression um, of happiness, joy, you know, excitement. And somebody, they go out uh, whale mm -hmm. hunting and they get a whale or bowhead whale. Mm -hmm. Ariga! They're going to celebrate <laughs> tonight or they have a uh, jigging contest and there's so much fun and music and everything. Ariga! You know? um. and, uh, and then Ali and I, Ali and I is like lots of fun, you know, in the Eastern <laughs> Arctic. They, you know, it's an expression for it's so much fun, it's such happiness, and it's there's so much joy. Ali and I, but in, there's a twist in in some of the words in the Eastern Arctic have an opposite meaning in my dialect. Okay, so Ali and I in the Eastern Arctic means happiness. Joy, excitement, whereas alienai in my dialect means it's it's uh, there's no happiness, <laughs> it's boring, it's scary, it's mm -hmm. you know we're not having fun. So <laughs> an example where one <laughs> word has two totally different meanings. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's interesting. <laughs> That's like the interesting thing about language. It's like one word, depending on, you know, because there's so many dialects within yeah. each language, you know? So one word could mean something there, or it could be a little bit said mm -hmm. different here, or, yeah, I think that language well, is... We've, we've come to know that Ali and I, like people in the Western Arctic Central know that Ali and I, what it means to people in the East. So, you know, we use these words interchangeably now. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so cool. And Chikis, do you want to tell us a little bit? Maybe like you could uh, tell us the translation of some of the phrases in the songs. Uh, yeah, I just can't remember the song right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I know. Saved by the bell. <laughs> <laughs> She's back. No. Yeah. We died out. Tried to go charge it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're a trooper. <laughs> and, we're, uh, and we're right here right now. Look. Oh, nice. We're at this thing called, what's it called? What's this place called? <laughs> Captain's Boil. Oh. Yeah. Some food? So, we're yeah. going to be <laughs> yeah. I think we're having crab. Look. Oh, oh girl. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Delicious. <laughs> It's too messy to eat while you're on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kara, since you're back, did you want to talk, mm -hmm. tell us a bit more about chanting and your process of creating these sounds um, and your drumming as well? Well, our drumming is uh, mm -hmm. is based on my great grandfather and my great grandmother, my great grandparents, and my great and my grandparents. Oh, it says 5%. I'm going to run back to the Ma, floor. That's the guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm like, oh, geez. But on the drumming part, it was it was them that uh, they had got me in, into it. Uh, I was only five at the time when they said uh, I was going to become a drummer. And uh, I told him, me? A drummer in the... And I said, me? Me? What am I going to sing, grandfather? <laughs> he said, you're going to sing the native songs. I said, and how? <laughs> he said, with a drum. He said, you belong to the drum. The drum belongs to you. I'm like, really? So he explained how... The woman invented the drum. Uh, white buffalo calf woman invented the drum. She made it. And he told a story that she got mad that one day she was doing a hide because some guy came up to her and got her mad. She had some exchange a few words. So she got angry and she tossed her hide in a bush. When she did that, it fell on top of a stem, a hollow stem. And she walked away. But she came back the next day. 
and uh, uh, she found her hide, came back to look for it, and uh, it was on top of that hollow stem, and she dropped something on it, made a sound, so she started hitting it, and that's how the drum became from her, and then it was loaned to the men. What a big mistake. <laughs> 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 my Muslim said that he said I'm not demoting myself but that was the biggest mistake they made he said because now they're colonizing the women and making them feel bad because they want to sing and drum it's, it's where they belong he said these men are nothing I'm sorry to say he said they destroy everything they touch not all of them not all of them but most of them, and I'm talking about the Cree men. <laughs> There's Winchiskuk, you know. <laughs> Call them, I'm not going to even mention that word. <laughs> and so it that's how uh, I, I got the idea of uh, starting the drum. And so they taught us, they taught, like, they taught 20 of us, and I was the only one that stuck with it. But we went to sweats, uh, lodges. We built sweats, lodges. We sang. We sang in a powwow for 15 years, and my gift is when someone sings a native song or any song, I sing right from the beginning to the end, even if I don't know it. That's the gift I have. Mm -hmm. So no Northern Cree is going to beat me in no arbor, because I'll sing right along with them. Besides, I uh, I stole a couple of their songs. No. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't think I would sing it, but the guy that told me, he's like, he came up to me, he's like, hi, uh, I'm from Northern Cree, and you sing one of my songs? And I'm like, oh. And I said, then what you can do about it? No. <laughs> he handed me a cigarette, and he started crying. He said, I got to tell you, the last time I heard that song, I made that song, he said, but I'm giving you the cigarette because I want you to sing it anytime, anywhere, any place. Because you brought a new beat to it, and you brought some healing to it. I've never felt that. And the last time I heard that is when my niece um, committed suicide. She used to like that song. And he cried. He sobbed. I was so honored that he gave me the song. So me, my goal is, like my grandfather said, is the reason why we want you to sing in the future, is we want you to bring those women back to the drum. That's where they belong. That's the only time women and children, they heal people is when they sing on the drum. He said the men, they don't have it in them. All they care about is money. He said, no, he said, you got to have the healing in your heart to produce, to help the people through the creator first and then Mother Earth and stay grounded. So that's why I sing. That's why I drum. That's why I do what I do. And I keep going. I kicked a lot of little asses, though. Little old men telling me, oh, you can't sing, you can't drum. I was like, oh, yeah, who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you, how old are you? Oh, 62. I said, you're a rookie. Give me that cigarette back. You're not listening to me. <laughs> You know, they're so calm. Like they, they just like to push you in the corner and keep you there. Yeah. Well, I'm not one of those ones. I'd rather push them and kick their butts and try to teach them a lesson and learn, teach them the history, right? No matter how old they are, if they're going to talk to you and say, you're not allowed to sing, you're not allowed to drum, even if they're 82, you tell them how it is because they're on the wrong path. Yeah. Because, yeah. So that's, that's where we come from, uh, that's how I get my jollies. <laughs> and, and Carol, if it wasn't for you, you know, I probably never would have gotten around a big drum and been able to sing mm -hmm. and experience that and feel that. And I'm so mm -hmm. appreciative of you for mm -hmm. inviting me always to sing with you. So welcome. I love that. I love the. I want to. I dreamt. I had a dream once. Mm -hmm. And you and your mom were in there. Oh, really? We're gonna, yeah, we're going to sing on a big powwow. And we're going to have, I think there was like 12 of us women. And we had backup singers. Oh, my God, we sound so beautiful. Mm. 
Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah. One day mm. we're going to fulfill that. We'll make that happen. Yes. 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 We will. Yes. Um. <laughs> and if they mm. say anything to us, I'll tell them we're sponsored by the Creator and Mother Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous yeah. story. Thank you. <laughs> if you're Very making much. it happen, you tell make sure you tell me where to go so I can watch it. Yes, watch yes. It live. yes. Yes. We got so many things going on right now, it's like mm -hmm. crazy, like from yeah. one to the one to the end to the other. But I keep standing my ground and keep doing what we do and like um I just got uh, I just got uh, a message today from somebody from APTN that wants to do a a, a story on us next week. So that's awesome. You're the mm. only ones. How come it took you so long? Maybe <laughs> I should wait another week. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. But they're the only, yeah, they were the only ones that that took so long to ask us, but maybe because by accident they kept missing or something, or they had just mm. too much going on. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, after, uh, and then we have a few more, like there's a few more places that uh, I'm not too sure, but one is from the Northwest Territories. They have uh, some kind of a uh, uh, reporter. He's coming out here to do a story on us too. So I'm like, yes, please come. The more the merrier. Hopefully, like there's a like women are are connecting with us, and I always keep my favorite women, right? I was like Connie, <laughs> Shy, uh, Danielle, uh, Tracy. Those were my favorite women, and I sang with them. They were so <laughs> perfect, like uh -huh. and and so fast to catch on. Yeah. So I would say I got a drum group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do. Yeah. 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 So yeah. And then this this weekend I got the opportunity, like uh actually, yeah, this weekend to watch this. Um they asked us to go do a documentary. So we went out there and I, there was just something absolutely <laughs> wrong with this picture. Mm -hmm. I was just mm -hmm. watching and observing and I'm like Oh no, I'm not participating in this. But then, spending a little bit more time there, I know it's um, it was kind of insulting to see, but yet to see on the other hand, mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of these women what they're doing, and I'm like, hmm, this is really puzzling. And then when they did a sweat, I was like. Okay, those are not the songs. What's going on here, right? You know, so anyway, what it was was a group of white women. Mm. I say mm. white women. Blonde hair, blue eyes, you name it. Mm. And they were being a family like natives. Mm. Must like, be you know, from those Germany. <laughs> huh? Maybe from Germany, because Germans love to do mm -hmm. anything. Oh, yeah, they, uh, I, I guarantee, yeah, yeah, I guarantee you, you're there from the UK. But mm -hmm. I, what I was kind of insulted about, I was looking and they were praying, smudging, smudging each other. And then when they sang, they sang like those drum haters on Facebook, that white society there that has a powwow in the States <laughs> once in a while. And they're like, whoa, yo, what? You know, <laughs> I'm like, what the heck is that? I enjoy it. You know, I'm not, I can't even sing like this. Punky's there with me. <laughs> He's looking at me and I'm like already going and I'm trying my best not to smile. And then I started having these tears in my eyes because I was laughing so hard inside and I couldn't let it out. So I covered my eyes up to here and I was wiping these tears off because I was trying not to show them because I was crying so hard. My tears were rolling. And that woman goes... Oh, she's crying over here. She's healing. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh. Okay, I said, I'll be right back. I went to my truck, and I just, because I was so, because Punky made me laugh, because she looks at me, she goes, Muscle Muscle here. 
I'm like, but it was so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Grandfather Bear with some muska. <laughs> that would have been an interesting experience, I guess. Very. Like that. And guess what? They're doing a documentary for the women in jail, right? Mm. And they're trying to help the women in jail. And there's a woman they're praising that lured a bunch of native children and a bunch of children. Killed the mayor's son and killed all these people. They, they they raped and murdered all these kids. And I'm like, okay, I had enough. I need to get home. I don't want to hear this. And I'm not going to praise somebody like that because I know they do good now. But the thing is, they're never forgiven for something like that. These are children. These are kids we we mourn for today. And and she chopped them up like and she talked about it like it was nothing. I was like, okay, I'm going. So they wanted me to go record with them today because they didn't have a clue as to how they wanted to sing. Mm. So I made excuses today. I was like, mm. oh, I, I I can't go because I, you know, so I just avoided it because I didn't want to be there today. Today was not a good day because I would certainly tell them you're wrong. Yeah. They're mimicking mm. our culture. They're singing the wrong songs. They don't know songs. Um, basically, if Chubby Cree backs them up, I'm going to put my name on the line with my community. So mm -hmm. I kind of like, heads up, I got to think about it, right? Mm -hmm. So I told them on the next one, let me know. I'll see how it goes. I'd mm -hmm. like to help the women, but mm -hmm. it's just it's not, it's out of my league. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. It's okay sometimes, I think, to remove yourself from uh, toxic environments. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was. Yeah. I think we're getting to the end of our chat here now, though. And okay. Say bye. <laughs> Say bye. <laughs> you, Say bye. You later. Say bye. <laughs> Where, where's the off button? <laughs> your, your lobster's getting cold. <laughs> I'm gonna and have to ask him to warm it up. And so I was hoping maybe that um, if if each one of you, well, I'm sure uh, Carol and Jacquees would be the same, but if you could teach me how to say "I love you" in mm -hmm. your language. Kisagitin. 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 Yeah, I knew that one. Kisagitin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Edna, how do I, how do I say "I love you" in? In your my dialect, Pagiyagin. Uh, Pagiyagin. Pagiyagin. Yagin. Yeah. Pagiyagin. 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 Yeah. Pagiyagin. Or in the Eastern Arctic, they say Nagligi Vagit or Naglingna. Nagligi Vagit. Wow. Easy way to Nagligi Vagit. But in my dialect, Nagligi Vagit, it's one of those again with reversal meaning. Nagligi Vagit in my dialect means I pity you, I feel sorry for you. But in the Eastern Arctic, it means I love you. Nagligi Vagit or Pagi Vagit? I could say that. Well, Pagi, one more time. Pagi I'll use it on the people I don't like. <laughs> and I love you. Sagiten and Sagiten. Yeah. And Nanaskomden, which is thank you. I'm yeah. so thankful for you all being able to make it. I know that the digital world is a weird place, and um, I was just so nice to get to see you all. And I hope that maybe one day soon we can all meet in person. Yes. Um, yes. yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm just very, very thankful to have you all here, and I'm so honored to have. You in the show. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Ilani, Ilani and, until next time. Okay. Ilani. Until next time. Love Bye. you. Ilani. Bye. Samaga. Oh, Samaga. Now, to meet Aha. Aha. Okay. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Samaga. Bye.